Mr. Speaker, for putting my request forward, and thank you to all my colleagues for this opportunity to speak to this horrific event. Assalamu alaikum. I start with these words. Our hearts are broken. Our minds are numb. This could speak for all of Canada. These are the words of Omar Kamisa, who works as community outreach with the National Council of Canadian Muslims. To everyone in that council, to everyone who is a regular visitor to the Islamic Centre of Southwestern Ontario, where I've had the great honour to meet with imams, to speak of true Islamic spirit, to talk about the enormous contribution to Canada from our Muslim community. La uh, communauté. The community and families in the Muslim community are an integral part of our country. We are one family all across Canada. And it's a moment of great sadness. Over and over, as we experience, as, as my honourable colleagues, the right honourable Prime Minister, the honourable leader of the official opposition, le chef de Bloc Québécois, the leader of the Bloc Québécois, Democratic Party, who so movingly reminded us of all the ways in which our society is not the one we think we are. We've been holding a mirror up to ourselves for some time now, and it's hard to like what we see. When Cookpea, Roseanne Casimir announces the preliminary findings of 215 long since died, but not that long ago, bodies of little children at the Kamloops Residential School. This event reminds us of how we stood together, and many of us here today in this chamber will remember standing in the bitter cold of Quebec City in 2017 with the Islamic community of Quebec City after the shootings in the Quebec City mosque and saying never again. What strikes me now as we gather together again to repeat our frequent calls that we do better, I think of the Honorable Member for Mississauga, Erin Mills, and her motion, Motion 103. Now, I, I think of her courage because I know she was targeted with some very nasty messages after she stood up and said, we have to do something about Islamophobia and anti-Semitism and hatreds of all kinds. We have to look at ourselves in the mirror and figure out what we do about it. One thing that Motion 103 did was, I think for many of us in this place who were serving when that was put forward, exposed us to Islamophobia. Because so many of my constituents, and many of them dear sweet people, I know them, I wrote back to them and I said, oh, no, no, you misunderstand. Motion 103 won't elevate Islam above Christianity. They were afraid of that. They, oh, no, Motion 103 doesn't mean we're going to have Sharia law in Canada. There's a level just below the surface and it's fueled by, they'd send me the websites, by the way, they had news sources they wanted me to read that said, this is what Motion 103 will do. Yesterday, before the Ethics Committee, the Minister of Heritage, and I wish I'd taken notes, rattled off a bunch of statistics of how many hate crimes had been fueled, how many more, and we, we heard this referenced in speeches a moment ago, police chiefs are reporting an increase in hatred online, an increase in incitement and radicalization to hate people based on their faith or the color of their skin. I'm at a loss. I don't think we should as political leaders, and I'm former leader of the Green Party, of course, and our leader, Annamie Paul, has expressed the deep, deep sorrow of all of us, but all of us together as elected people, I think, have to actually stop for a while and listen. Maybe just invite people from the Islamic community to come talk to us. Because there's something very, very wrong in a beautiful community like London. And I've had the honor to spend a lot of time there. And I, I do want to send my condolences to my to our former colleague in this place, because of course the mayor of London used to be the MP 
for London West, to the current MP for London West, to the current MP for London Fanshawe, the current MP for London North Centre, all of the MPs touched by this personally. I know your hearts are broken and you don't understand how this could happen in your community. Neither do I. I just know that as Canadians, we have to do much, much better. And that starts with acknowledging that we are broken, that we allow people to be in, in, infested by a seething hatred that would look at a beautiful family out for a Sunday walk and with premeditation, according to the police, with premeditation, try to wipe out a whole family. To young Fayez, we'll never as a country be able to tell you how sorry we are, how much we hope for your future, how much we mourn the loss of the people of your family, the Afza family. So with that, Mr. Speaker, I don't think it helps us much as politicians to pretend we have answers. But I do agree with the Honourable Leader of the New Democratic Party. If I ever again see a political party trying to divide us based on someone wearing a hijab, let's call that out. Let's make sure that we say to all of the Islamic community of this country, from the bottom of our hearts, we ask for your forgiveness, that we let this hatred live among us. We love you. We care for you, just as we do for all the members of this human family that is so very broken. Our hearts are broken. Our minds are numb. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.